Well, Chiefs Kingdom, this is going to be something a little bit different. Had a little bit of time here in the day as the practice squad announcements came out. Um, and I know a lot of folks are fired up. So I wanted to jump in here and give you something live that will be my takeaways. I'm not going to do the, the intro and the stuff, but I will say this. If you want more of this kind of thing, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, and if you're new to this channel, you're just fine. Us hit the like and the sub and the bell notification so you hear everything that we have. Dan has a video coming up for you today. It is likely going to be some film on Darius Fountain as well as his reaction to some of these signings and losses. And losses are what I want to talk about. Uh, it is always a calculated risk when you expose players to waivers. This is exactly what that means in that you elected not to keep them on the 53. So you have to get them through that 24 hours where other teams can come pluck them. And that's honestly what's going on here. I have to change my branding as well, unfortunately, because uh, I left something up there you guys don't need to see right this second. Uh, and this is what happens. Tim Ward has gone, been claimed by the New York Jets. A lot of folks really liked his preseason, and I have to say it was a step forward for him. But we do have to keep in mind the reason he went out to waivers was because most of his plus performances were against thirds, if not backups every now and then. It was not against first teamers. That has a significant difference. What they've done in the meantime in keeping Kendo on there is, is put the focus into their draft pick. I can understand that. I thought Kendo actually showed less, needs more time to cook, to tell you the truth, but he'll be all right. And they brought Damone Harris back to the practice squad. I actually had Harris on the 53, so I'm really glad to see him back because I think he's still got some upside that he can get to. The other big loss is Bo Pete Keys. He did get picked up by old friend Chris Ballard, plucked him off of the waiver wire. And uh, from the folks that I know out in Indianapolis, I know that they're paying attention, not just to Chiefs players, but uh, DBs in particular. They like a lot of the same things that the Chiefs do. They're not quite hung up on athleticism as much. Uh, they like the strength, they like the length. And that's why they went and grabbed keys. This was another, I think, calculated risk by the Chiefs that didn't go their way. I thought they felt that they could get him through waivers and get him back. I think that was their intention all along. And while that isn't the greatest for this organization, I think it's good for Bo Pete. I think he's got a chance to uh, have a more significant role in Indianapolis. But this is, again, a player that I had on my 53 because I didn't want to see this happen. Uh, I felt the the investment in him is going to be key. So it's a tough couple of breaks. But luckily, that's the limit of the breaks. Um, we have some other announcements rolling in that I do want to cover here. And I, I have to give credit to those who are reporting this. Um, I go off of the Chiefs beat reporters, uh, as well as some of the media personalities in town and the, and the national media. Um, I, I don't like to go over things until they're confirmed. And so we do see some things coming here where uh, Herbie and Matt Derrick both confirmed that Austin Edwards back via Herbie. Um, Damone there came that. Daryl Williams coming back to the practice squad. I really like Daryl's game. You guys have heard me say that before. As a backup, I think he's pushing where if Austin Blythe doesn't work out or doesn't heal very well, and you had to elevate someone from the practice squad, I think Daryl could be somebody that could be serviceable at center if you have to have that. So I think that's important. Um, one that I think fans are going to be upset to see uh, is that Darwin Thompson is not coming back. And that is because he has chosen, not been claimed, wasn't worth a claim, but he has chosen to join the Buccaneers of all teams. Uh, and is not going to be back in Kansas City. I think that's um, a development. I think hopefully that – I haven't seen an announcement about Gore, but I would hope that that brings Gore back to Kansas City. Um, let's see here. Cornell Powell. There's the big one that everybody's been working for. Via Herbie, uh, T.O.P. over at the star. Cornell Powell back on the roster, uh, on the practice squad, where I think he belongs. I think this is the correct placement for him. You'll hear Dan talk about that. Dan and I were opposite on that. A um, little bit different evaluations, but I think that's absolutely fine. This is a good thing that Cornell's back on the practice squad. This was the goal because he does need time. He needs time to develop. He needs time to get better concentration, et cetera. Quite frankly, I, I look at Cornell Powell as hopefully a repeat of the Jody Fortson story in that difficult first year, needs some learning, needs some development, needs a little bit of a, a, a physical change, definitely needs – a concentration change in catching the ball. That is, you know, obviously job number one for a wide receiver. So I think that this is a story that could have an arc similar to Jody Fortson. So keep an eye on Cornell Powell. I'm glad to see him back. Um, bringing in uh, Christian Roseboom. 
that I saw him pop, I think, once for the Rams. I think that's a decent signing. Luckily, they're bringing back Amari Cobb, who I had on the 53 as well, because Cobb is a guy that can run quick enough to be a serviceable will, still has some some learning to do. By no means is he a fully baked product at this point. Um, they also brought back both Devin Key and Zane Anderson, so that's good. And now Bichelle is back uh, via Herbie Teopia as well. <clears throat> and uh, Cortez uh, Boughton. Am I saying that right? Broughton, sorry. Um, from the Chargers, I think that's an interesting one. Um, I believe that Sam McDowell had a couple of reports as well. Maybe I've already gone over those. Um, let's see if Matt has something. Yep, Devin Key. So I think we're about caught up here, you guys. Um, and I will tell you this. I'm going to look for continued signings. And I, I want to go over my list right here because I made this up last night as I was going through the transactions. Uh, you guys might have seen my tweet this morning. I think Craig and I are both very high on Jacoby Stevens. He went unclaimed, and he's still out there. Go get this guy because he is the next version of Dan Sorensen, in my opinion. He just makes plays. He's not fast enough to be a true safety. He's not big enough to be a true linebacker. He is a hybrid, and I want him on this roster, on the practice squad, ready to develop because I think in a mix, he could step in and be somebody that, again, is serviceable. Uh, he is my top rookie to go get i had another one just ahead of him in quincy roche but he got claimed um then jason strobridge is a guy that i think showed out of the, at the senior bowl i think he's got some upside he's got great length he needs time and he needs coaching i think that will happen for him uh as well as deo <laughs> adiingbo who i think has a lot of upside i'm guessing he's going to go back to the colts i haven't seen that announced yet so i hope the chiefs are talking with him as well and then one of my favorites uh, from the draft process was Kay Johnson, a great route runner, another receiver that I think could fit into something that the Chiefs could use eventually. Uh, again, comes from a small school and, and needs some some work there. Um, I think Everson Griffin is going back to the Vikings on a renewed contract. Um, um, cut the guarantee, you know, at the post week one thing. There's no way they could fit him on this roster without cutting somebody really significant or really restructuring multiple players in order to get a, a contract for Everson Griffin. So that's that's not in the cards for the Chiefs. Pernell McPhee is a different story, and I think it's a situational pass rusher. Much like we saw Terrell Suggs a few years ago, I think McPhee is somebody that could get on the cheap that could help them uh, and bolster some veteran pass rush that might be worth taking a look at. Um, in a diminished role, diminished snap count, I think he could be productive, much in the role that we saw Taco Charlton in last year. Um, no word on Taco Charlton as of this stream. So that's where we are. It is, I think, uh, a key part of the season right now for these players, for this team to get enough depth that they can help themselves out in case of emergency. Because this roster has been so good, that's why other teams are claiming the Chiefs' cuts. But I still think that there's a lot in the pipeline, and I think this practice squad is the pipeline that you're looking for. Looks like another addition, thanks to Herbie Teope right now, for, uh, Benito Jones. Coming over from the Dolphins, I believe. Yeah, spent time with the Dolphins. Um, a UDFA out of Ole Miss. Um, Ole Miss means that he was... Uh, across the state from uh, Willie Gay, uh, probably bumped into each other a few times. I'm definitely sure, as with everybody else in the SEC. So um, we will get into this in depth. Again, Dan has some film coming on Darius Fountain. I'm sure he'll discuss Cornell Powell's return to the practice squad as well as another update. That will be from Dan this afternoon. I hope that you guys enjoy it. I just had a few extra minutes, so I wanted to jump in. You guys enjoy your day. Keep an eye on the wire and uh, on, on my uh, Twitter handle here, Ryan Tracy NFL. For uh, all the updates that you need to know, I will let you have them. Have a good one. I'll talk to you next time.